Hey, Cookies here. So this is part two of our setup for bigwigs for Sepulchre of the first ones. So let's go ahead and just jump right into this. I have my notes up and I'm just going to kind of run through. I haven't actually adjusted this myself yet. So this time we're going to be kind of walking through it as I set it up myself. So first up, we have Lords of Dread following Anduin. And what I have written down for this boss is, uh, let's see here, scroll to the top of my notes. For our personal alerts, again, we're using that same concept from the first video that I went over. So if you need to know what I'm talking about, then just go over to the first video real quick and check out how I'm organizing this uh, setup walkthrough. And then for Lords of Dread, we have personal alerts starting out and we're going to have Cloud of Carrion and Fear Fearful Trepidation. Uh, what these abilities are, I'm just going to walk through them real quick just so that we have a good idea. These are like the two main mechanics that are going to be happening throughout the fight. Uh, so you have Cloud of Carrion is a dot that will go on yourself. So you can watch these little videos here. This is just Mythic Trap. And players will get debuffed with this circle around them. And so if we get debuffed by this circle, we want to know about it so that we can handle it properly. We don't necessarily care if other people are debuffed by it. Um just because we can visually see them affected by it, but we want some kind of audio cue to notify us that we have it so that we can be aware so that we don't accidentally pass it to the wrong people or, you know, unintentionally pass it around and cause, like, unnecessary chaos. And then the other ability that we're going to be setting up a personal alert for is fear Fearful Trepidation, which is an ability that gives you a giant purple circle around you and you need to head to a specified spot. It'll probably be specified by, like, a raid leader or something when you're actually doing this boss. Um, but essentially, once you're positioned, the green circle people need to come into the purple circle and it removes their debuffs, as you can see there. So there the purple circles run out, the green debuffs run in, and it gets rid of all the, the green debuffs. So we want to be very aware of when we have either of these debuffs, and we also want to know the difference between if we have a purple one versus if we have a green one. So we'll start out with the Cloud of Carrion, which is the green debuff that we saw. So here it is. We're going to set it to when it's only on us. So check only when on me. And then we're going to go over to the sounds. And I'm just going to go ahead and let's see here. We're going to go ahead and make it the, um, the defensive noise that we usually use. Uh, if you saw the part one of this video or like the Sanctum of Domination big rig setup. So that's this noise right here. That sound right there, whenever I have that sound, it tells me that I have some kind of debuff that's going to be hurting me that I need to use a defensive for because that's what this debuff does. And it'll be a nice way to separate it from the purple debuff, which is where we need to be a little more active and moving and whatnot. So we have that set up. And then the next ability is the Fearful Trepidation. We're going to, again, set it only when on me. going to make the sound uh, the classic flag taken PvP sound. And that'll be a nice noise to let us know, hey, you got this debuff, you got to move, you got to get out of here and help out the, you know, other debuffs or get into a, a proper position with this uh, debuff that you have. So it alerts us nice and quick. And that way we can differentiate the two so that when we hear those noise cues, we know which debuff we have rather than setting them both as the same noise and then questioning which debuff we got and having to actually look at like the visual cue rather than just having an audio cue. It makes it a little bit easier. Okay, and then for the raid event alerts, uh, I only have one ability listed, which is the uh, Slumber Cloud here. And that just spawns these like purple swirlies on the floor that turn into these little purple like gas clouds. And we just want to avoid them. So knowing when they spawn will just be a nice uh, thing to know so that we can just look out for them when they're spawning rather than like they already spawn and we're on top of one. So we will set the sound to something a little more noticeable. Um, we're going to go ahead and use, let's see, what would be good for this? Let's do, uh, probably just a nice beware sound seems nice. Beware. I like that. What else could we use? Uh, we could use the spell under you sound. That's like nice and simple and it just lets us know that, hey, the boss is spawning these. So the more minimalistic setup would definitely be this and that's what I typically like. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, we also have some other sounds. That's pretty good. But yeah, I'm just going to use this and see if I end up liking it when I actually do the boss. That is just very simple, and it'll just be a nice audio cue of uh, knowing to look at my feet. Okay, and then for the countdown, 
I have uh, Unto Darkness and Infiltration of Dread, which are the two major mechanics that the bosses themselves do when they hit 100 energy. So just having a countdown of like, hey, the bosses are about to do this is going to be nice because for one, this Unto Darkness, when it happens, uh, this one is... Yeah, the bosses will take 100% increased AoE damage during this, so having a countdown so that I can preemptively like prepare AoE abilities to cast or precast into them will be really, really big. Um, well, I have to sneeze. Holy moly, okay. We recovered. Um, and then the Infiltration of Dread turns everybody in the raid as hostile enemies, so it'll interrupt like our damage cooldowns and stuff if we're doing anything, so being aware of that so that we don't accidentally waste CDs like right before the phase transitions. I mean, obviously we should be watching the boss's energy, but again, this is just to kind of like set us up again for when it's about to happen. So, and the way that we're going to differentiate this is the bosses never overlap their abilities, they'll always alternate, but so that, again, we want to know, just like the debuffs, how we separated the sounds and made two different sounds, we want to have two different sounds for this as well. So what I'm going to do is, because there is a male and a female boss, I'm going to make a male countdown voice for the Malganus ability, and then I'll have a female countdown voice for the, um, I don't know the other boss's name. Uh, should not have been on here, so... But you get the idea. So we will go to Unto Darkness. We will set a countdown, and then I'll go to Sound, and we make the countdown. We change the voice to... We could change it to English Male or English David. I don't know the differences between those. Um, let's just go ahead and use the English Default here. I like that. So let's just set it to English Default Male. And then we will scroll down to the other ability, which is Infiltration of Dread. Set a countdown, go to the sound, and change it to English Default Female. And then we'll see how those sounds when I end up doing the boss. So uh, that is it for the Lords of Dread. So now we can go ahead and move on to uh, Rigalon. So for Rigalon, uh, Personal alerts, I have Dark Eclipse, which I will move over to him on Mythic Trap as well. Dark Eclipse is just a debuff that you're going to be, be wanting to be very aware of when you do have it, because you need to do something very important to avoid wiping the raid. So what we're going to do is set a personal alert so that obviously we know, hey, you have this debuff, you need to do something with it. So we will go to... Um, where is it? What was it called? Dark Eclipse. Where is Dark Eclipse? At the very top. Here we go. The Dark Eclipse. Only went on me. And we'll go ahead and set the sound to the Flag Taken sound. And then we have for Raid Event Alerts, I have Massive Bang on here, which is a big boss ability that happens. Um, and again, it's kind of similar to Dark Eclipse, where like the entire raid needs to do something to avoid dying. So we will set that to a sound and just make it like the destruction sound to differentiate it from the flag taken, for instance. Because it is similar, but a little bit different. So we don't want to have the same sound, otherwise it might confuse us. And then for the countdown on this boss, we have Celestial Terminator, which just spawns this like pattern on the floor that you need to dodge. Um, I was going to set a countdown for Massive Bang, but it's a 10 second cast time anyways when this ability starts. So that's plenty of time to react to it. So what I'm going to do is just set the countdown for this Celestial Terminator, which just spawns all these lines on the floor. So the countdown it basically just serves as a way of like, hey, be ready to move out of the way of all the beams on the floor. Or hey, be ready to watch your feet. So it's not incredibly useful, but honestly, looking through the fight and like doing research... I didn't really find anything that I would rather have a countdown for, so I figured that this would be the best thing if we're going to put a countdown on anything. So we'll go ahead and put a countdown on there. And that is honestly it for Rigolon. It's a very straightforward fight. There's a lot going on, and there's a lot of like individual mechanics, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward as far as alerts and stuff go. A lot of the, a lot of the mechanics in the fight kind of do their own job well of uh telling you that you need to do something or that you have you know something going on in the fight okay last up we have the jailer so for personal alerts um we are going to go for rune of damnation and rune of compulsion which both affect random players so again don't necessarily care when other players have them 
but we do need to know when we have them. So Rune of Damnation only went on me. And uh, let's double check the Rune of Damnation, I believe. Let's see, where is it at? Rune of Damnation. Um, you need to jump inside these like little pillars or holes in the ground and then blow up and then it knocks you back up into the air. So that one we will use the, I believe, let's go ahead and use the flag taken sound for that one. That may get changed, but for now we'll use that. And then for the Rune of Compulsion, that mind controls us. So for that one, let's see. You know, actually, I'm going to turn this around. Yeah, we're going to go ahead for the Rune of Damnation because it does like self-damage kind of thing. And we have to probably it's going to be like on higher difficulties. You're going to want to press a defensive in order to survive it when you jump down in the hole because healers aren't going to be able to heal you right away. So we're going to use that uh, that retro sound. To let us know that we have an important debuff to use a defensive on. And then for the Rune of uh, Compulsion, it mind controls us, and we need to go to a specific spot in the room to help deal with the mind controls better. So we'll set that to only when on me, because again, we don't really care if other people are getting affected by this, only when we do. And then we'll make the noise. This one will be the flag taken PvP sound, because this is more like a, hey, you have this debuff, you have a few seconds to get out of the raid and deal with it. So there we go. And again, this is all just personal preference, so it's not like you have to sit here and copy-paste exactly what I'm doing. I'm just giving you examples of why I'm doing things and what decisions I'm making for myself. Okay, so for the raid event alerts on this fight, Relentless Domination, um, which is you need to... Why is it not letting me click? What did you do? There we go. Uh, this You have to LOS the boss when this happens, so this one we will use the, uh, probably like the destruction sound I think would be good, or the, let's see, let's use the runaway, that one's fine, I like the runaway sound for that, for the LOS thing. And then we have Marty Dom, which is a... He's going to do a combination of attacks, and at the end of the attacks, we have to help soak. The whole raid needs to like stand in it and help soak, or groups need to help soak. I don't know exactly how it works yet, but we're going to set that to um, the gong sound that I used before. Uh, where was it? I think it was up towards the top. It is the boxing arena gong. And I usually use this sound for if there's anything that I need to soak or that the raid needs to like stand in and soak. Uh, it just reminds me to jump in. So we'll use that for that. And then lastly, we have Decimator, which also is another ability that needs to be soaked. So again, we could use the same exact sound, but I'm probably just going to break them up. And I think this one will be, uh, let's see. Oh, Decimator is actually, sorry, I got this wrong. Decimator is a knockback it looks like so this one we just need to be aware of so we could use the beware sound if anything beware that's just letting us know hey there's a knockback coming and some heavy aoe damage on the raid and then the last ability for the countdown this is moving into the countdown section is going to be decimate or no i'm sorry it's not decimator it is torment I read my notes incorrectly torment is right here which is uh, this ability that is going to, where is it out? Let me find it. Torment, torment. This is the same thing, but in phase two. So it gives every, it gives like most of the people in the raid, it looks like. I think everybody except the tanks, it looks like it gives. Uh, it gives them these circles and they need to move out of the group and then they explode and leave a swirly behind and then explode again. So it's just like a get out of the raid and spread out kind of mechanic. So just having a countdown to know, hey, in five seconds, you're going to have to do a little bit of movement or you just might want to pre start pre-spreading when you hear the countdown because then that just saves you time rather than running around uh, once the ability's out um, will help a lot. So we will find, is it even on here? It doesn't look like it's on here. Um, right here, right? Torment. Yep, that's it. So we will go to countdown and there we go. And that is all the abilities for the Jailer. So that covers the entire Sepulchre of the first ones. 
obviously some of this stuff is subject to change. I'm sure that when I go and do progression myself in Mythic, I'm going to be changing some of this stuff up because that's how it usually works. But this is my first impressions of what to set up and how I decided to set it up myself. So hopefully this video is useful. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and have a great one. And I hope you all do really well in your uh, sepulchre of the first one progression. See you later.